On the 12th of January 2010, a massive earthquake devastated Haiti, killing over 220,000 people and injuring over 300,000. Over three months on, nearly 1.5 million children have been directly affected by the disaster. Many more remain at risk and continue to require assistance and protection. I spoke with Susan Bazell, Global Head of UNICEF's Child Protection Programme, on her recent visit to UNICEF UK. Our discussion focused on child protection in Haiti. I began by asking her why children are more vulnerable after disasters, such as the Haiti earthquake. After a natural disaster, such as the earthquake in Haiti, children are are definitely more vulnerable um, than they were before the earthquake for a range of reasons. One reason is the fact that many of them become separated from their families and they fall into a category of what we would call separated and unaccompanied children. Um, They're vulnerable because they don't have adult carers um, looking out for them, making sure that they aren't moved um, away from their city, away from their home, away from their community. Um, They're they're vulnerable to, to traffickers. They're vulnerable to people who would be wanting to exploit children. Hard to imagine that there are people like that, but there are. I understand that even before the earthquake, Haiti faced significant challenges around child protection. Yeah, what's interesting about about the earthquake is is that we had recognized long before um, the 12th of January that that there was a child protection crisis in Haiti. There are a number of things going on there. Um, One is obviously in the face of absolute poverty and large families. um, Families were looking for alternatives for their children, for alternative care, so large numbers of children were relinquished, as we call it, to um, either faith-based organizations for the provision of care or private organizations. There were no government-run alternative care institutions for children in Haiti. And so the fact that that we really didn't have a solid state-run, monitored, owned, operated system um, suggests that children were exposed to a range of, of possible risks. After the earthquake struck, what steps has UNICEF taken to improve the situation for children? In the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, we, we have a couple, couple of traditional things that we try to do, and one of them is to register, trace, and reunify separated and unaccompanied children. This is a primary thing that we need to do, and we began doing that. It took a little bit of time to get the process in place, but we've registered uh, uh, 600 or more children at this point, and there have been some reunifications We also, in a little bit of an unusual uh, circumstance, because of the large number of residential care centers, sometimes we hear them called orphanages, many of the children in them are not actually orphans, we visited um, hundreds of these to determine how the children were, what would they need, were supplies needed, um, were they hurt, and so on. So that was a big undertaking for us as well. We're also working with partners to create safe spaces for children who are in open areas and settlements to go and have a place where they can play, to be children, where they can access some emotional support. They're sort of psychosocial, as we call it, but it's really trying to help children cope. And finally, we're working with partners to address gender-based violence, which we're hearing increasing reports of, um, and we're trying to ensure that victims have a, a place where they can go and get assistance. The issue of intercountry adoption and child trafficking hit the news in the weeks after the Haiti earthquake. What is UNICEF's stance on intercountry adoption? The Haitian um, context has really forced us to be much more public about our position on intercountry adoption, and our position is really um, based on the international standards that exist, so including the Convention on the Rights of the Child, as well as something in private international law called the Hague uh, Convention, which governs intercountry adoption. And our position is really this. UNICEF is pro-permanent family arrangements for children. Ideally, that permanent family arrangement is with your mom and dad, with your extended family. In some cases, that may not be possible. There may be ways of having permanent foster care arrangements that are family-like in your own community, in your own culture. This, too, would be ideal. At any stage of a broad spectrum of alternative care arrangements for children, we're seeking the permanent ones, and that includes intercountry adoption. We're in favor of intercountry adoption. We value greatly the um, the big hearts and and the welcoming families that there are for children across national boundaries. When that takes place, we need to ensure that the entire process 
is transparent, without any exploitation, and that it is governed by the international standards that exist. Finally, despite the huge humanitarian response to the Haiti earthquake, there's still obviously much to be done. What are the main challenges that the country faces going into the future? There are many challenges facing Haiti. I think one of the biggest is retaining the attention, the support of the global community. We saw so much of Haiti in the media that we don't necessarily need to have that media coverage, but we need to keep Haiti in our hearts and minds. Um, and as development actors, and UNICEF will remain a partner for the long term, and we've been there a long time. It's important that we continue to do that. Um, so the challenge will be maintaining our interest. Uh, I think a second big challenge is, is possibly overcoming some of what have become traditional practices. So we need to somehow support the instilling of a belief that I can, with support, care for my children. I don't have to give them up. I need that support. And I think a big challenge in this country is going to be putting in place a robust social protection system, social welfare, social welfare services, maybe cash transfers, special incentives. And the experts on that will really need to put their heads together to to figure out what that should look like. But that that will be an enormous challenge. Um, I think also challenging will be creating a, a system that affects everybody, not one that is simply for those affected by the earthquake. We know the country is full of people and families who need support, and and, uh, UNICEF will be one of many partners trying to find those solutions in the longer term. Um, I think we'll get there. To find out more about what UNICEF is doing around child protection in Haiti, please go to unicef.org.uk forward slash Haiti. This is Hugh Riley reporting for UNICEF UK.